Well, it was a tough week for Andrew Scheer and an even tougher week for some of his now former staffers. Late yesterday, news broke that Scheer parted ways with his communications director and chief of staff. And that development was on top of several scathing editorials from some key party players. It is time for the Sunday Scrum. Joining me today in Ottawa, freelance columnist Susan Riley. Hello, Susan. Morning, John. In Toronto, Vicky Mochama, freelance journalist and host of the Safe Space podcast. Hi, Vicky. Hi, John. And Tasha Carradon, CEO of Ellipsum Communications. Hi, Tasha. Good morning, John. And in Calgary, Danielle Smith, News Talk Hello, 770 host, former leader of Alberta's Wild Rose Party. Everyone's got such long monikers. Hello, <laughs> Danielle. Hi <laughs> there. All right, let's begin with the departure of Shear's top aides. Guys, what is going on here? Danielle, do you want to start us off? Oh, I feel so bad for Brock Harrison. He used to be my com communications director, really talented guy. But, you know, you got to cut off a couple of heads if you're going to demonstrate that you're making some changes. I don't know that this will be enough to save Andrew Scheer. I, I think he deserves another chance at an, a second election. But I think uh, there's just too many forces aligned against him. I, I would be hard pressed to think that he's going to win his leadership review. I think in a few months we'll be talking about who the next conservative leader is going to be. Wow. OK, that was fast. Susan, what do you think? I'm, I think I think Danielle's absolutely right. She's one of the few voices that has anything nice to say about Mr. Scheer. Um, <laughs> the, the thing that has struck me most, though, uh, post-election, has been how the former Harper forces have come out very critically uh, of Mr. Scheer. And particularly, I'm thinking of Corey Tonight, who was a very close uh, confidant and advisor to Mr. Harper, uh, now working for Doug Ford. And I'm thinking about Ronna Ambrose, the interim leader, who said, you know, just tweeted on the weekend, I think, that uh, one of the first things she, one of the her best memories was participating in a pride parade. You know, a very direct uh, dig at Mr. Shear. He is not getting any love at all from, from the people who built the Harper machine. And that that's very telling. And yet, with the jettisoning of these two staff people, he seems to be trying to fight back. Mm. Uh, Vicky, what's your take? My take on it is that there are a lot of things that the Conservative Party has to answer for about this election, and I think the the op-ed, uh, you know, about the question, the, for the failure of Andrew Scheer to answer the question about gay marriage, and for the party to have a fuller response during the election, means that somebody has to hold responsibility for that. And I think, do think, you know, for Brock Harrison, it does come down to decisions that his communications team made around what the, what Andrew Scheer should or should not say during the campaign, and so it's. You know, fine and well for Andrew here to fire those top two people, but at the same time, a lot of the responsibility for the choices came out of Andrew Shear's mouth. He said what he had to say. And so how does he go back to the rest of the party and say, you know, I fired those top two people who only repurposed the message I told them to re repurpose. And so he's still in the middle of that fight and whether or not he'll win that leadership review kind of remains to be seen. Mm. Tasha, did they deserve to go, and will their uh, departure make any difference to Shear? Um, you know, I, I think it was Candace Bergen um, said that uh, there was a communication failure in this campaign. Uh, I, I side with Vicky, though. I think it's um, less a communications failure as the message that was being communicated was not one that voters wanted. Um, you know, the Conservatives did increase their, uh, their numbers in terms of vote, but the concentration of their vote is what really has to be looked at by the party. They have returned to become more or less uh, the Reform Party. That is their, their base now, and they need to expand into urban Canada. They need to be able to connect with voters in Ontario and Quebec. Um, and I don't think that Scheer, uh, no matter how hard he you know, gets new staff and whatever, will, will necessarily be able to do that because he is part of the message. And you can't change who and what you are. He has made statements, especially on LGBTQ rights, that um, are impossible to, you know, to unhear or unsee. Um, and he's not doing anything to, to indicate that he has changed that. And it's not simply those positions, but I think the sense that um, you know, from the beginning, he was probably seen as a placeholder. A lot of people didn't think they could win against Trudeau in this election when he was elected leader. Um, things sort of changed with SNC-Lavalin, but you know, uh, under the circumstances, was he ever seen as the you know the great uh, next leader of the Conservatives like Harper, who, who took them to three victories? Probably not. So uh, people are being harsh on him, but that's because they remember that they were in power and they want to get back there. Strong calls for change there, whether it was the messaging during the campaign, though, or uh, the uh, substance of that message itself, presumably whether it's Andrew Scheer or whoever else uh, is able to lead the party starting perhaps in April and their need to communicate it or communicate it better. Susan? 
they need a better communicator, basically. I mean, even since the election, I think Mr. Scheer has grated on nerves across the political spectrum by his reflexive oppositional Anything that Justin Trudeau or anyone else says, mm -hmm. um, he is going to condemn. It doesn't matter what. If John was here, John's away this week, um, he would say, well, that's the business of an opposition leader to oppose. But there are ways of opposing. I mean, you don't have to you know, forfeit your conservative values uh, to come up with, uh, with more persuasive and more um, attractive uh, critiques of, of the government. He just looks like a kind of a bitter, angry, uh, stuck person. That, that's how he strikes me. The conservatives are doomed for second place. Uh, oh, Craig, what did you well, make of not, that? Uh, the party is in a muddle. The party is imploding. Uh, and I think what these people are doing, these prestigious party within leaders within the conservative party, uh, on left and right, they're inviting Mr. Scheer to resign. How serious are they right that unless he recalibrates Nick on that issue, the conservatives simply cannot win, and this is this yeah. is this is for him a massive well, problem. Think, in yeah. terms of the election, this is the equivalent of cutting off one's nose to spite the face for the conservatives. It's a no-win situation. But mm -hmm. I'll tell you how this does make sense. If Andrew Scheer wants to remain leader of the Conservative Party of Canada, maybe he thinks that he can only hold on to the leadership if those social conservatives come out to keep him in power. That's the only way I can make sense of this because from a long-term perspective politically, it's a no-winner. And anyway, it's too late. So the message to conservatives is, you know, you got to change your uh, you got to change your leader. That's what they've been saying since the next the, since election night. Conservatives have been telling uh, Andrew Scheer that he is not the man for the job. It is 2019. Wake up, smell the coffee, and move on. And the reality of all of that is he may not be able to win an election, but he may actually be able to win the Conservative leadership yep. race. Yes. And if the uh, you know the rules around the leadership race and who gets to go and who gets to vote favor him and. Yeah. Indications are they might, uh, you know, he gets, he will be able to stay in power. He can, he can co solidify and consolidate his base within the party, drawing on the cons social conservatives if he wishes. Uh, but I think the bigger question is, can he win that election? And I think the the signs but, but, are no. They it's are tough. afraid you know, that you, it you will be. be but think of it this way. When you look at the Conservative caucus today, it is very social conservative. So he's with people around him that yeah. validate him. Yes. Then you think of the party, it they're grew. more progressive. And then you, when you think of the Canadians that would be open to voting for the Conservatives, they're even more progressive. So he's in an environment where he thinks he's being validated, but those Conservative those conservative voters out there are not yeah, as well, social And, and it's also a conundrum for them. It's a minority government. Do we want to be switching leaders when we really don't know when the next election will happen so that's also a problem for them should they stick to the to, to the fellow they know or change and maybe three months later they're in an, in an election campaign uh, uh, drip 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 though that issue <laughs> keeps going there are more conservatives keep raising it as you say craig ron ambrose keeps raising it so that's not going away all right i gotta leave it there why things are getting busy nick great to see you tonda craig and joyce always a pleasure and thank you all for watching the house does return on december 5th don't worry there'll be lots of politics before that and we'll be back here in seven short days take care